have to do it every bloody single time. Or I maybe have to ride one straight away. Um. No. <laughs> no such luck, I think. No, I have no yellow ones anymore. No. Back. Second one. Sorry, this is a uh, requires a lot of concentration. <laughs> Not really, but let's pretend it does. <clears throat> um, da -da 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 nope, this match and the last. Wait, which one was that? The last one. It's always the last one, isn't it? Or it's just not in the system. It's also possible. Um. Yeah, it's gonna be this one. I can feel it in my bones. Or maybe it is not. It is not. Oh no, wait. Uh. Wait, you go back. Yeah, it's this one. Wood. It's Stephen Thompson. Another celebrity murder. I'd love to have something to tell under Sheriff Eckley. There has been a bit of a development. Miss Jackson had sex with someone other than her husband the night of the murder. Talk screen showed signs of flunitrazepam in her system, so it may not have been consensual. With whom do we know? Another patient at the rehab clinic, a Mr. Stephen Thompson. Codis hit. He gave his DNA voluntarily. His cousin was reported missing three years ago, and Stephen was next of kin. It turned out to be a false alarm, but the information is still in the system. No good deed goes unpunished, I guess. See if Brass can bring him in on suspicion of rape. All right. There's also some physical evidence, a ring. But we're still looking at where that fits. Finding the person it fits might be a good start. Jeez, Catherine. You don't do anything around here. And yet you're ordering me around. Yeah. We'd like to bring Stephen Thompson in on suspicion of rape. What evidence do we have? His semen. I think that is pretty good. Even if she hadn't been murdered, date rape is still rape. We know you had an intercourse with Clorinda. Not only did you have intercourse with the victim, but she had roofies in her system when she was murdered. Wait, murder? Roofies? What the hell? I don't know anything about that. You don't deny that you had intercourse with her? Not when you ask like that. Look, yeah, we had sex pretty much every day this week, but she was a married woman. It's not the kind of thing you just blurt out. Can you prove you two had an ongoing relationship? Yeah, I keep detailed records every time I get laid. How the <laughs> hell would... Wait, yeah, maybe. We both got STD tests on the same day. I can give you my medical record number, or whatever. I, you guys can look stuff like that up, right? I don't know what Clorinda's was. Dr. Robbins, our coroner, can provide Clorinda's medical records to us. Write your number down and we'll look it up on the medical database. No problem. Okay. Is this your ring? I wish. Would you try it on for us? On your left ring finger, please. Like a wedding ring, huh? Sure, I'll try it on. It's a little big for me. I've always had skinny fingers. Look, it's a nice ring, but it ain't mine. Okay, then. To the lab. That's not the lab. <laughs> okay, there we go. Medical database. Uh, evidence. Search. Stephen did get tested for sexually transmitted diseases, just as he said. That's quite a laundry list of tests. He wasn't taking any chances. Okay, and how does that prove that he had sex with her? Unless she has an STD. But that still doesn't make a difference, I think. If it was protected. 
Did Clorinda's medical records mention anything about a recent test for sexually transmitted diseases? She was tested for a wide range of STDs last week. She went the whole nine yards. HIV, gonorrhea, chlamydia, HPV, even syphilis. The results were all negative. It appears Stephen was telling the truth. I find it unlikely that they would both have such comprehensive screening done at the same place and time, coincidentally. And still that's not proof. Okay then, um... What now? <laughs> Can I do anything with that plant now? So it was, oh it was from a leaf. Oh, so I have to find a leaf. Right? Why didn't we ask to have his fingerprints? Oh, uh, let's uh, look at. Oh, that seems prog pro processed. Processed? Did I say that? Yeah, I think that's. There's nothing here anymore. Let's go to the other thing. Okay, now he isn't here. Can we look around? I doubt it. No, we can't. Uh, brass. <laughs> I'm just trying what out everything. Need? We need to talk to you him. Your stories checks out, You're Steve. Free to go, but we'd like to ask you some more questions. Hey, sure. Somebody murdered my girlfriend. I want to help. Did she many mention anything about going to the spa? I don't remember her saying anything, but she used the spa quite a bit. And you look strange. Look at those eyes. Okay. Crazy eyes. Were you in the spa area when this happened? No, I was in my room, chilling out. Clorinda and I had just, you know, I was resting. <laughs> she exhausted you. Did Clorinda have any enemies? Like somebody that would kill her? No, she never mentioned anything like that. She did gripe about this guy from work, though. Jack Shell, I think his name was. I don't know all the details, but I guess he and Clorinda had this rivalry going. And her marriage was pretty messed up, obviously. Did Clorinda's husband know about the affair? Probably. She left him a message last night. Oh, God, you don't think... That crazy bastard. No, because he doesn't wear a ring in the, the movie. It does not pay to get ahead of the evidence. We'll find Clorinda's killer. Rest assured. Can you think of anything that might help us find Clorinda's killer? I don't know what else to say. I don't think I really had a chance to know everything about her life yet. I believe you're free to go. Hey, thanks. If you need me, I'll be back at the rehab center. If I ever needed to be surrounded by shrinks, it's now. Good for you. Can we go somewhere else? Yes, we can. Jack Shell's dressing room. Who the hell's Jack Shell? Hey, I got Ernie Goldwasser down here. He wants to know the results of his wife's autopsy. I can stall him for a while, but if you want to be the one who tells him his wife was murdered, then you need to get over to my office right away. Okay. Hey. Okay, we're here. Where's Ernie Goldwasser? We got him down in interrogation. He walked off with his wife's purse, so we're holding him for interfering with a crime scene. That sounds like an honest mistake from a grieving husband to me. Me too. Honestly. But it is what it is. Let's go talk to him. Look, you want to tell me why Captain Brass is accusing me of removing evidence from a crime scene when all I did was take my wife's personal belongings from Twilight Palms and bring them back home with me? Mr. Goldwasser, your wife's been the victim of a homicide. Homicide? Do you know who killed her? No, and you have crazy eyes as well. Do you know a man named Steve Thompson? No. Is that the man who killed my wife? Mr. Goldwasser, yeah, I need best. to ask you to calm down. I know how difficult this must be for you, but we're doing the best we can to conduct a full and thorough investigation of your wife's death. I have no idea who you're talking about. None whatsoever, but if he had something to do with her death, I swear to God. Look, please take my wife's personal items. You'll need them. They're evidence, right? Take whatever you need. Do whatever you have to do. Great. Have you ever seen his ring before? I don't think so. No, I don't recognize that ring. You hesitated a moment. I thought for a moment that it looked familiar, but I, I, I don't know why. Maybe I've seen it before. I, I, I honestly don't know. Would you mind trying the ring on your left ring finger? <sighs> I'd rather not remove my own wedding ring if at all possible. Please. Mr. Goldwasser, it will only take a moment, and it will help our investigation. All right, all right. Give it here. Yeah, it's a bit small. Can't get it over my knuckle. Sorry. 
That's definitely not my ring. Okay, then. Um, let's go through it and see your purse, I guess. What do we have here? Money. And her cell phone! In the last few days before Ms. Jackson's death, Mr. Goldwasser called her cell phone several times. He's sitting right in front of you. There. His last call was made at 10 p.m. on the day of the murder, which is around the approximate time of death. So he can have done it then. Anything else? No. What's that? A hair? This phone is conspicuously free of fingerprints. I wonder if that thread came from something used to wipe it down. To the lab again, then we go to the other guy's house. Um, where am I supposed to go? <laughs> the threat is not in here. Oh, what? No, 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 back. I, I don't see anything. Okay. Is that a... What, what is that? Okay, I don't think I have anything to compare it to, do I? Uh, what else do I have? Oh, no. Crap. Wrong button. Uh, can we check a cell phone? Like, on the thingy here? Back. Audio? Close. Evidence? Yes, we can. Cheating bitch! I'll kill you and the little coward you're screwing. That call was made at 10 p.m. But the last call on the phone was to check voicemail at 10.15. Okay, did anyone else hear that? I okay. know I've heard that bell somewhere before. Oh, no. So there, you have it, a bell. Okay, then, uh... I think we should go talk to the guy again. Were you aware of your wife's affair? Damn. How dare you say that to me? We know it isn't an easy thing to discuss, Mr. Goldwasser, but please, tell us what you know. Oh, God, this is all such a shock to me. I had no idea she was seeing anyone else. Liar! Cheating bitch. I'll kill you and the little coward you're screwing. I... Uh, I see. I... Uh, <laughs> yeah, that sounded really bad, even to me. But you have to understand, she, she just left me a message telling me that she was sleeping with someone. I would never have actually done anything. So when they found her dead in the hot tub a couple of hours later, that was just a big coincidence? Yes, damn it! Okay. Where were you between 10 and 11 p.m.? And by the way, I'm chewing gum, so if you hear anything, it's that. I was at home. I got home from work at about 9.45 and I heard Clorinda's message. I had to calm down a little bit before I called her, so... You left that message after calming down. <laughs> yeah, I thought I had myself under control, but I heard her voice on the voicemail and I flipped out all over again. That was right at 10. I remember because the whole time I was talking, the stupid bell from the church up the hill was ringing. Now I know why that bell sounded so familiar. I remember that church. But when I first came out here to teach my seminar, a colleague from the university was showing me around. He's a history professor, and he told me that the church was built in the middle of nowhere, specifically to allow for the ringing of that bell at all hours. I can definitely confirm that it's more than an hour away from the Twilight Palms Rehabilitation Center. So he so makes a he... death 